everyone. Remember when, at the beginning of my journey, almost a year ago now, I kept saying that I am doing my best to read and to respond to your messages. Oh yes, I did. But of course, I could not keep up and respond to all of them as the channel grew, but I still read. Oh, I do read. And that is because, as I've said over and over again, I love the community here at Virgin Rock. I guess you figured that out, as from time to time I say, I learned this or I learned that from reading your comments. And one other thing that I'm doing is taking note of your recommendations. Yes, in spite of what some might think, I do. Now, recently, one of my longtime supporters, Lee Kennison, recommended a modern artist that I had never heard of before. Soon after Lee's message, dozens of other messages started to pop up, recommending not only the same name, but the same song. Now, I am currently in a more or less historical journey through parts of rock music, but at the same time, I am interested in seeing what direction this music will take from now into the future. So. I do want to listen to modern artists as well. But of course, the day has only 24 hours in it and I can only do so much. But today, I decided to give this young artist a try. Since so many of you recommended him, with Lee saying that he has the potential to be the next modern day Bob Dylan, whom I haven't listened to yet, but I've heard his name and certainly will be giving him attention too. I will now listen to Hi Ren by Ren. Now, of course, you already know everything about him. You don't need me to tell you anything, but I will still share with you what Vlad has told me. And that is that Ren Aaron Gill is a 33 year old Welsh artist. And I have a bit of a soft spot for Welsh music and musicians. I, I love the traditional Welsh music, and I have heard some incredible um, singers, instrumentalists, performers of Welsh heritage, and I, I think they're special. Vlad also told me that Wren taught himself to play guitar by slowing down tracks by famous guitarists. Well, where there's a will, there's a way. And that he started his career as a musician when he was 12. Vlad tells me that one very important thing to know about him is that Wren has spent many years dealing with health issues as he was misdiagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and later was diagnosed with Lyme disease, which he is currently battling. Now this song, Hi Wren, was released just about half a year ago and has now over 13 million views. That's quite a lot. So let's give Ren a try. Ah, but before listening to Hi Ren, I have something I want to show you. As you already know, Vlad is the one who does all the non-music behind the scenes work for this channel. He puts in a lot of time, not only editing the videos, but also beforehand to prepare everything I need for a first listen. And as you can probably guess, all of it is done at the computer. Now, as we all know, computer work can be tiring and physically taxing. Well, Vlad tries to be extremely careful when it comes to health and especially his back, because as some of you have already noticed, he is a runner. And of course, too much sitting can not only hurt your back, but cause other problems as well especially if you want to be physically active in sports. So what he's used in the past was a little standing desk or a desk converter, as they are sometimes called. It did the job, though it was a bit clumsy and cramped. It's a small space. But recently he got this. An electric powered standing desk which he absolutely fell in love with. Now, there are quite a few brands of electric desks, but quality and price wise, both Vlad and I think that the FlexiSpot ones are among the best. After all, 
Good Housekeeping positioned it on the second out of their five picks for best electric desks, while Games Radar positioned FlexiSpot's desks on the second and third of their top 10 picks for best electric desks. Of course, they offer a large variety to choose from with different finishes and colors. Vlad picked this one because of its size and color. He has always said that white suits Apple products, fits them like a glove. So this particular desk that he chose is 55 by 28 inches, more than enough for his big screen, his laptop and his desktop, all the keyboards, everything. It has an industrial grade steel frame, so it really is heavy, but it has a built-in electric motor lift mechanism, which allows him to switch from sitting to standing in seconds. All he needs to do is to press a button to adjust the height really smoothly from 28.7 inches all the way up to 48 inches. It doesn't actually feel like I'm even pressing a button. It's more like a, a soft touch. Really nice. And as if this isn't enough, it also has four programmable height presets. Vlad always tells me that we Americans have gone way too far in our desire for comfort. Every time I order something, he says, does it come with AC? It also has two USB ports and another USB-C port for charging, which is really convenient. And believe it or not, this desk is also safe. You might ask, what do you mean safe? How can it hurt you? Well, not you, but a child. And as a mother, that's a concern of mine. So it has a child lock button, which helps prevent accidental touch. And what is a desk without a drawer, really? This desk, of course, has a built-in drawer, pull-out drawer, a seamless integrated storage space, which nicely suits the rest of the design. One thing that we appreciate about FlexiSpot's design is their attention to detail. For example, you see inside this drawer, it is not flat all across but it has a nice little indent in the front to help contain pens and pencils and things. Vlad also ordered this matching chest of drawers, which provides even more space and fits beautifully with the desk. It has a full-size filing drawer down here, and then it has these two nice storage drawers for whatever, and they lock. So again, you can secure it from a child or just make it easy for transport, however you need to have it done. Both of them can be on wheels if you choose, as you see here, which is great for cleaning under and behind or providing a flexible workspace. Again, something Vlad is really happy about since he likes to maintain an impeccably clean workspace. We were also impressed with the way the entire set was packed and by how easy and fast the assembly process was literally under 10 minutes to put it all together out of the box. Now, we've seen electric desks out there which cost thousands of dollars, but this one does exactly the same thing as those do, and for a fraction of the cost. So, I do recommend it, and I encourage you to consider buying from this company if you want to invest in your health by improving your workspace, and if so, it would help me if you would use the link in the description. Now, let's get back to Ren. I just want to add that the clip was shot in one take live, meaning both the video and the music. Okay. You will see you will see a, a small mic on his collar mm -hmm. and his guitar is plugged in. So it was just boom one go and i also want to tell you one little clue just a little clue and i'll say pink the wall all right here we go
back and look at that intro again because um, Vlad told me to pay attention to the video and what's going on and I saw some th when he was being rolled in in the wheelchair the fellow rolling him in had a strange mask I want to make up make up what that is before I go on okay I guess it's a pig. And I can't make out, is that supposed to be a, a butcher's gown or a doctor's gown? Something like that. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure I kept that in my mind because um, I, I understand there's quite a bit put into this production. Hi, Bren. I've been taking some time to be distant. I've been taking some time to be... So it seems to be a conversation between some different characters here. Still, I've been taking some... Always come back. Deep down, you know that. Deep down, you know I'm always in periphery. Rent on your pleas to see me. It's been weeks since we spoke, bro. I know you need me. You're the sheep. I'm the shepherd. Not your place to lead me. Not your place to be biting off the hand that feeds me. Hi, Bren. I've been taking some time to be distant. I've been taking some time to be still. I've been taking some time to be by myself since my therapist told me I'm ill. And I've been making some progress lately. And I've learned some new coping skills. So I haven't really needed you much, man. I think we need to just step back and chill. Ren, you sound more insane than I do. You think that those doctors are really there to get- So, both of these sides of the conversation are both addressing Ren. Okay, that's interesting. And the music is kind of falling into a supportive accompaniment pattern. Um, I'm going to listen a little bit further before I comment much because I want to understand what's going on here. But then, then we'll start digging into what, what I'm noticing. So I haven't really needed you much, man. I think we need to just step back and chill. Ren, you sound more insane than I do. You think that those doctors are really there to guide you? Been through this a million times. Your civilian mind is so perfect to always be in lie to. Okay, take another pill, boy. Drown yourself in the sound of white noise. Follow this 10-step program. Rejoice. All your problems will be gone. Fucking dumb, boy. Nah, mate. This time is different, man. Trust me. I feel like things might be falling in place. And my music's been kind of doing bits, too. Like I actually might do something great And when I'm gone, maybe I'll be remembered For doing something special with myself That's why I don't think that we should talk, man Cause when you're with me, it never seems to help You think that you can amputate me? I am you, you are me, you are I, I am we We are one, split in two, that makes one, so you see You gotta kill you if you wanna kill me I'm not left over dinner, I'm not scraps on the side Oh, your music is thriving, delusional guy Where's your top ten hit? Where's your interview with Oprah? Where are your Grammys, Ren? 
No way. Yeah, but my music's not commercial like that. I never chase numbers, statistics or stats. I never write hooks for the radio. They never even play me. So why would I concern myself with that? But my music is really connect. Okay, so it, it appears to be that this is a conversation and inside his mind that's being acted out on the screen here. And there are obviously two different characters. He's portraying two different, very different characters and sides of a personality. It, it kind of reminds me of a classical composer that we musicians, classical musicians, always have to keep in mind as we're working with his music. And that is Robert Schumann. Because he, in his music, portrayed two different personalities. And maybe, depending on how this goes, maybe I'll get into it a bit more afterwards and, and explain what, what I notice as the connection here. But it seems like this seems to be a, a mental battle, a battle in the mind between two different aspects of, of a person's uh, character, personality. And one is rather dark and aggressive. And, and I think that Ren is doing a fabulous job of portraying this sort of sinister, dark, aggressive quality. And then the other one seems to be an attempt to step back and find a bit of balance and, and a more perhaps the more I don't want to say more artistic because artists and especially very effective expressive artists often have these this inner turmoil and these struggles and that is what brings out and helps them helps them carve out their their artwork but one is a calmer attempting to remain calm attempting to remain objective side of the mental state so now i want to go back and listen to this introduction again before i go too much further ahead because i want to hear whether, because remember I commented that this introduction was rather intense. Now that I'm seeing how this is developing, I want to see if I can find any clues in the introduction of these two personalities or, or anything else. So I'm going to back up. Um, I am at minute three, roughly. Just trying to remember so we don't have to go through the whole thing again. little figure there is kind of it's it's simple and kind of lilting in quality it feels like a typical introductory figure to a piece of music i don't i don't see anything really strikingly obvious in that but now i'm going to keep listening and see what comes next gets darker here. And then we fall into the rhythm. I guess I don't see anything that really seems like two personalities in that intro. It is, it is kind of agonized in the way it's agonizing in its in its expressive quality it's it's a sort of minor tonality and and it seems like it's really digging into some emotional elements but it's not really saying anything specific to my ears at this point but now that i'm kind of getting the picture of how this is laid out and what's going on 
I'm going to start again and try to feel the flow of it. And also, I want to tell you that Vlad has handed me the lyrics here so that I can follow what's being said because obviously it comes fast and furious and I can understand him, but it's hard to keep up. So I've got the lyrics here and I'll try to follow both at the same time. Hi, Bren. I've been taking some time to be distant. That's that's a that's a very great delivery of what the lyrics are saying here. It's risky because I always come back. Um, you thought you buried me, um, but actually, deep down, you know I'm always in the periphery. And then, going on, it's it's been weeks since we spoke, but you know you need me. You're the sheep, I'm the shepherd. This is a very controlling side of a person's mind. It's, it's the side that seems to be um, obsessive and, and dark in its, in, in how it perceives things. And, and then it says, not your place to be biting off the hand that feeds me. And, and then we have Hyren switching to the other personality, the other side of the personality. Well, okay, I don't know whether this is meant to be a, to represent a split personality or whether it's just the inner conversations of a person who's struggling. I don't know yet, so we'll see. This other personality starts by saying, I've been taking some time to be distant, to be still, and to be by myself. Let's listen to this a bit here. Feeds me. Hi, Bren. I've been taking some time to be distant. I've been taking some time to be still. I've been taking some time to be by myself since my therapist told me I'm ill. And I'll be but it doesn't really sound happy. It it's more it's more a little bit defensive, a little bit um, trying to assert itself a bit. Be by myself since my therapist told me I'm ill. And I've been making some progress lately And I've learned some new coping skills So I haven't really needed you much, man I think we need to just step back and chill Ren, you sound more insane than I do You think that those doctors are really there to guide you Been through this a million times or So this seems to be a real psychological struggle Now this dark side is coming back You sound more insane than I do That's the kind of thing that a person has going on in their minds when they're really in a dark place. Um, and then it's bringing up this question of doctors. You think that those doctors are really there to guide you? And as Vlad told me, I understand that this whole piece of music was kind of born out of some serious health struggles that Ren 
has had and is still having. So this seems to be really putting his experience and his struggle out in the public, out in the open and exploring it as well, expressing and probably working through some of these thoughts that he's had along the way. Than I do. You think that those doctors are really there to guide you? Been through this a million times. Your civilian mind is so perfect to always be lied to. Okay, take another pill, boy. Drown yourself in the sound of white noise. Follow this ten step program. Rejoice. All your problems will be gone. Fucking dumb boy. Nah, mate. This time is. And I'm thinking back to, to the, intro, the, pre-intro when when Ren was rolled in in the wheelchair and that creature with the pig's head and the uh, doctor's coat covered in blood is the one who put him there. And now I'm looking at these, at, at the words here, at the lyrics, and it's putting him through um, this idea of civilian mind. Civilian mind. In other words, you're not a professional, you're not a doctor, and and you are very easily governed as a civilian. So it's it's implying that these doctors aren't really there to help you. They're just putting you through all these different steps and procedures and treatments and and um, you're hoping that this will this will help you, but it will solve your problem. All your problems will be gone. But this this personality this side of the person conversation is saying it's 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 stupid you're you're a dumb boy to trust these people and then now we're coming back to the gentler side saying mm, it's different this time so we gone, fucking dumb boy! Nah, mate, this time is different, man, trust me. I feel Sounds like things bit... might be falling in place. Sounds a bit scary, and my music's though. been kinda doing bits too. Like I actually might do something great. And when I'm gone, maybe I'll be remembered for doing something special with myself. That's why I don't think that we should talk, man. Cause special when you're with me, with it never myself. seems to help. You think that you can amputate me? I am you, you are me, you are I. And this is where that idea of Schumann came in when I realized that this is all one person here for doing something special with myself and then immediately this voice comes you think you can amputate me um, we are one split in two um, so you have to kill yourself if you're going to kill me and there's this battle of you and you being me, and I want to do something special with myself. But this aggressive side is saying, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. So then how does this work out? Falling in place, and my music's been kind of doing bits too. Like I actually might do something great. And when I'm gone, maybe I'll be remembered for doing something special with myself. That's why I don't think that we should talk, man. Cause when you're with me, it never seems to help. You think that you can amputate me? I am you, you are me, you are I, I am we, we are one. Split in two, that makes one, so you see. You gotta kill you if you wanna kill me. I'm not left over dinner, I'm not scraps on the side. Oh, your music is thriving, delusional Crazy. guy. Where's your top 10 hit? Where's your interview Insane. with Oprah? Yeah. Wow, your Grammys, Ren? Nowhere. Yeah, but oh, my music's not commercial like out. that. I never chase numbers, statistics or stats. I never write hooks for the radio, they never even play me. So why would I concern myself with that? But my music is really connected. And the people who find it respect it. And for me, that's enough because this life's been tough. So it gives me a purpose I can rest in. Man. And that is probably the best defense that an artist can bring to this um, pervasive and aggressive and sinister self-doubt and self-criticism is to remind oneself that I'm not doing it for fame. I'm not doing it for recognition. I'm not doing it for, for those popular popularity reasons. I'm doing it 
to meet someone somewhere, to connect with someone in a way that perhaps they need, to as a gift to those who wish to have it. And the people who do find that in my music will respect it and that's that's enough for me. That's what I am interested in doing. Um, and then there's reason, because life's been tough. So it gives me a purpose. Again, I see Ren here um, with his very difficult life that he's been through and the struggles he's had and still having. And I hear his voice here saying, this is what's keeping me alive. This is what's helping me keep going. This is the thing that gives my life a reason to be here and gives me the ability to fight off this other darker element. Okay, now I think this is around about, yeah, this is about where I paused the first time, right about minute three. So let's see what comes up next. It gives me your purpose like I'm resting Man, you sound so pretentious Ran, your music is so self-centered No one wants to hear another song about how much you hate yourself Trust me You should be so lucky Having me inside you to guide you, remind you To manage expectations, provide you perspective That thing you neglected, I get it You wanna be a big deal Next Jimi Hendrix, forget it Man, it's not like that Man, it's just Okay So he's even bringing in a famous guitarist Jimi Hendrix, whom I haven't spent much time, but I know the name, right? I've, I've heard the name, and in fact, um, it's on my list of things to listen to. <laughs> so, this Wren is now his defense of, I am, I am, not interested in fame, but I I have a purpose. I find purpose in my music because it connects with people. And I'm remembering what Vlad told me that in such a short amount of time, this video has had more than 13 million views. Obviously, obviously, Ren is connecting with a lot of people through this song. And I guess I can begin to understand why, because this is much more, this is about something other than the music itself. Uh, there's not a lot going on musically. The guitar is just providing a, a backdrop, a sort of rhythmic um, propulsion. And it's all about the message here. The message of inner turmoil and inner conflict and how one deals with it, how one experiences it and how it affects one and and how do we work through it. I appreciate the honesty. One of the things that um, we find as artists is that we do have to be honest with ourselves if we are going to survive. We have to face our weaknesses. We have to face our doubts. We have to, we have to come look front, bring our vulnerabilities front and center and, and view them because what we end up doing as artists is exposing that part to the world. And it can be scary. It can be intimidating. It can be very, very difficult to bear oneself in that way to whomever is paying attention. And it opens a person up to the potential attacks and abuses of that vulnerability, which, of course, the world always, there are always opportunists who are going to inflict that sort of thing on someone who is willing to do so. But here, this song is so open and vulnerable in its message. And as I said, the music itself, the guitar, is simply a, a 
backdrop. Kind of like, kind of like this cracked wall that is behind Rin in the video. It's the canvas, it's the, it's the kind of a mood setter, but it's not really communicating much in itself. I could have somebody strum and you could put anything above it. You could put something dark like this or you could put something happy, um, something inane, something incredibly deep. So it's a very versatile type of accompaniment which works for a lot of different things. And that's simply what it's being used for here. Kind of like um, when we want to go somewhere, we get in the car and drive down the road. And the vehicle is the same regardless whether we're going to the store to buy groceries, going to our favorite concert, going to the hospital for an emergency, or going for a much anticipated reunion with friends, or a lovely vacation. The vehicle remains the same. It's where, it t it's, it's where we're going that is important. We just want the vehicle to get us there. That's kind of what the music is doing here. It's simply, jing, jing, it's being the vehicle that carries us down the road on this journey. Patience provides you perspective, that thing you neglect it, I get it. You wanna be a big deal, next Jimi Hendrix, forget it. Man, it's not like that. Man, it's just like that, I'm inside you, you twat. No, it's not, man, you're wrong, when I write, I belong. Let me break the fourth wall by here. acknowledging this song. Ren sits down, has a stroke of genius. He wants to write a song that was not done previous. A battle with the subconscious, Eminem did it. Played on guitar, Plan B did it. Man, you're not original, you criminal, rip off artist. The pinnacle of your success is stealing other people's material. Ren, mate, we've heard it all before, oh, she... I saw something just recently in the news about, I don't even remember the name, but there was a, a court case about an artist borrowing material. And there's been a lot of discussion in the artistic communities about the decision of the court because it was decided against the person who borrowed or was inspired by that artwork and reused some of it. And there's, it's an ongoing discussion, even happening today. And I haven't followed it extremely closely simply because I've got so, so much going on right now, but it does interest me. And now here, this, this dark side of the mind is saying, you're Artistic creations aren't even yourself. They're not even valid. They're not even They're not even uh, Anything of your own creation. You just s Stole it from somebody else you you took it from some other person who already made a great success out of it and Again, it's this it's this mental process of that tries to break down one's self-confidence, break down and destroy the gift that one has to give, to share. And um, it's something that all of us artists have to contend with. I guess I can't say that I find myself, my whole experience, my personal experience in this song, but I see elements of the things that I recognize as being something that I face, that every musician, every artist faces at some way, at some point, in some way, along their artistic journey, because we do have to examine ourselves and make sure that we're not simply borrowing and rehashing material. That what we do is really truly ourselves, is really truly genuine, really is coming. But at the same time, every great artist stands on the shoulders of those who came before. And the ability to, to 
take what has been done before us and to use it to further the development of artistic expression and to continue the connection between the artist and the audience. Um, that is not stealing. That is, well, if a previous artist's work inspires you, that was hopefully their whole purpose was to meet you, to connect with you. And now through that connection, the gift is carried on to the, to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. And so we have, by this process, we have, let's say, Bach, who himself came from a long line of musicians. And, and he did not just pop up out of a vacuum. Um, he stood on the shoulders of others, so to speak. And ever since Bach, those who come after have been inspired, have been fed by his work. And we even find it in rock music. As, well, there was that Jethro Tull Bore, which I did some while back, I listened to some while back. And other manifestations of this what is that i guess we have a timer going or something hold on a second i don't remember remember exactly what i was saying because that timer popped up out of nowhere i guess i was saying that that musicians don't just and artists don't just appear out of a vacuum we we build on what came before and so simply because we've borrowed something or made use of something does not mean we've stolen it. As long as what we have to say through it and how we handle it is genuinely a creative process from within ourselves. So, uh, going on now, let's see what happens next. No rip off eyes, the pinnacle of your success is stealing other people's material Ran mate, we've heard it all before Oh, she sells seashells on the seashore Fuck you, I don't need you, I don't need to hear this Cause I'm fine by myself, I'm a genius And I will be great, and I will make waves And I'll shake up the whole world beneath us That's right, speak your truth, your fucking god complex leaks out of you It's refreshing to ask for you, say it instead of downplay it uh, music is all about the creative process and if people can find something to relate to within that then that's just a bonus Fuck I you. just I'm said fucking something kill you, similar I'ma fucking kill that. me then, let's fucking have you Ram I'ma do it, watch me prove it, who are you to doubt my music cause I call the shots I choose if you die Yeah I call the shots and so I choose who survives I'll tie you up in knots when I lock you inside <sighs> News flash I was created at the dawn of creation I am temptation I am the snake in Eden. I am the reason for treason. Beheading all kings. I am sin no, with no target. rhyme or reason. Son of the morning, Kevin. Lucifer, Antichrist, father of lies. Mustopheles, truth in the blender, deceitful pretender, the banished avenger, the righteous surrender. When standing in front of my solar eclipse, my name is stitched to your lips. So you see, I won't bow to the will of a mortal, feeble and normal. You wanna kill me? I'm eternal and mortal. I live in every decision that catalyzes chaos that causes division. I live inside death, the beginning of end. I am you, you are me, I am you, friend. Well, I just said a little bit ago that um, the music was mainly the vehicle, the guitar was mainly the vehicle to tell the story, but now suddenly it has become more part of this, the telling of the story. That was quite a dramatic um, and effectively performed portion there. It started with this news flash and the, the revelation of this dark side, this dark voice. News flash! I was created at the dawn of creation. I am temptation. Medicine. I am the snake in Eden. 
I am the reason for treason, beheading all kings. Ascending. I am sin, you with no rhyme or reason. Up. Son of the morning, Lucifer, Antichrist, father of lies, Mustopheles, truth in the blender, deceitful pretender, the banished avenger, the righteous surrender. When standing in front of my solar eclipse, my name is stitched to your lips. So you see, I won't bow to the will of a mortal, feeble and normal. You wanna kill me? I'm eternal and mortal. I live in every decision that catalyzes chaos, that causes division. I live inside death, the beginning of end. I am you, you are me, I am you, friend. Oh, that's great. That's really great. What did he do there? He took this series of chords and... and... walked them up incrementally, starting lower. And you notice he also started slowly. Bomb. Bomb. Bum, bum, and and that creates this feeling of suspense and danger and and this sort of foreboding and and like there is something bad about to happen <laughs> and but but with this slow pace and then the pace of the progression increased quicker. They came faster and faster as they stepped up the scale. And then there was that little hurried section there where he was playing more broken type chords. And then we hear the ascending pattern come again. This time it's getting even faster and it gets faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And it builds us up into this incredibly taut, tense moment of anticipation and stress. And so the musical elements that are happening within that, we have the rhythmic element starting slowly and increasing. We have the harmonic element, these, these um, tense incremental chord progressions stepping up. We have the, I could say the melodic element of the ascent, even though it's not really a melody, but we could call it the melodic element, the ascent, bit by bit by bit by bit, moving upwards. All of those combine to create this incredible moment of drama here. Very nicely done. And that is far more than just driving us down the road. That is a part of the story and the emotional um, feelings that, that are experienced in that moment. I've been taking some time to be distant I've been taking some time to be still I've been taking some time to be by myself And I've spent half my life ill But just as sure as the tide starts turning Just as sure as the night has dawn Just as sure as the rain falls Soon one is dry when you stand in an eye of a storm I was made to be tested and twisted I was made to be broken and beat I was made by his hand It's all part of his plan that I stand on my own two feet and you know me, my will is eternal And you know me, you've met me before Face to face with a beast, I will rise from the east And I'll settle on the ocean floor And I go by many names also Some people know me as hope Some people know me as the voice that you hear When you loosen the noose on the rope And you know how I know Alright, so we've had the dark voice revealed Now we have this other voice which is revealing himself as well. Hope. And you hear the in the guitar, yes, it did start, bum, 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 bum. but the whole atmosphere that's being created by this backdrop of music 
is more open, more, I'm not sure if I would say peaceful. There's nothing peaceful about this. There is still a sense of, of battle, a sense of conflict, a sense of um, having to fight, to defend, to assert, uh, even in this hope voice. This word hope in the midst of all this dark chaos here is, is reminding me of this little verse that um, I learned years and years ago, of course, by Emily Dickinson. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And there's this quality in this music of that kind of persistence and never stops at all. Even when you don't have the words, even when you, even when you can't really prove anything, yet here he is expressing this element of hope. It sings the tune without the words and it never stops at all. Let's back up an, a little bit and hear that part again because I like what I've heard here. Starting at the end of the drama. It's like an evil creature. And now we have this calm after the storm. Hi, Ren. I've been taking some time to be distant. I've been taking some time to be still. I've been taking some time to be by Repeating myself and I've spent before. half my life ill. But just as sure as the tide starts turning, just as sure as the night has dawn, just as sure as just the rain falls sure. soon runs dry when you stand in an eye of a storm. I was made to be tested and twisted. I was made to be broken and beat. I was made by his hand as a part of his plan that I stand on my own two feet. And you know me, my will is eternal. And you know me, you've met me before. Face to face with a beast, I will rise from the east and I'll settle on the ocean floor. And I go by many names also. Some people know me as hope. It's, Some it's people know me as the voice that you hear when you loosen the noose on the road. And you know how I know that I'll prosper? Cause I stand here beside you today. I have stood in the flames that cremated my brain and I didn't once flinch your shame. So cower at the man I've become When I sing from the top of my lungs That I won't retire I'll stand in your fire Inspire that me to be strong And when Interesting. I go right The way that this is progressing through and now is stepping up in this very courageous, bold way It's making me think of and recall and remember Freddie Mercury's Bohemian Rhapsody, the way that that one took us through the same type of dark journey down in hell and then clawing out and climbing and rising, laughing at the demons behind. This is the feeling that I'm getting right here in this part of the story. How I know that I'll prosper Cause I stand here beside you today I have stood in the flames that cremated my brain And I didn't once flinch your shame So cower at the man I've become When I sing from the top of my lungs That I won't retire I'll stand in your fire Inspire the You notice also how All the way through this song Up to this point We've kind of had to use the term song And music a bit loosely because it's not incredibly melodic it's more it's more oratorical and kind of goes back to the tradition of oration and accompanying an oration uh, with instrumental backdrop and and some of those ancient storytelling uh, dramatic telling traditions. It's been very much like that. But then, in this moment, suddenly his voice becomes more melodic. And we find it actually holding a pitch, 
carrying a note that's recognizable. I have stood in the flames that cremated my brain and I didn't once flinch or shake. So coward the man right I've here. become when I sing from the top of my lungs that I won't retire or stand in your fire inspire the me to be strong. And when I am gone I will it's ride in the music that I left behind. Ferocious, persistent, immortal like you, we're a coimented different side. That's a special moment there, where as this voice of hope stands up and asserts himself and puts the evil one in his place and says, no, I'm stronger. I've, I was born for difficulty. I was born to, to be tested and to take this abuse and to stand up and rise up and be victorious over it. And then he says, so cower at the man I've become. In that moment, hope says, I am a man. I'm not afraid. I'm no longer fighting to remind myself of who I am. I know who I am and be afraid of me. And in that moment, it suddenly becomes musical. Well, of course, this little tune that he's singing, da 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 ba ba bum. It's still not a really, you know, we wouldn't say that it's, it's a whole song, but suddenly it becomes tuneful, melodic, something to sing to, as if that is the means that is the only way in which music can be produced in one's life is after all this battle and and because of all this battle the music will rise and be poured out of us i really love that moment i want to hear it again and then i'll keep going and where did he stand up i guess he stood up right in here too okay let's start with him sitting i want to watch him stand Taking some time to be still I've been taking some time to be by myself And I've spent half my life ill But just as sure as the tide starts turning Just as sure as the night has dawned Just as sure as the rain falls soon runs dry When you stand in an eye of a storm I was made to be tested and twisted I was made to be broken and beat I was made by his hand It's all part of his plan that I stand on my own two feet and you know That's me, where my he will stands. Is I didn't see and you first. know me, you've but now he's standing. Before. Face to face with a beast, I will rise from the east and I'll settle on the ocean floor. And I go by many names also. Some people know me as hope. Some people know me as the voice that you hear when you loosen the noose on the rope. And you know how I know that I'll prosper? Cause I stand here beside you today. I have stood in the That's flames that cremated my brain and I didn't once flinch or shake. So cower at the man I've become When I sing from the top of my lungs That I won't retire I'll stand in your fire Inspire that me to be strong And when I am gone I will rise In the music that I left behind Ferocious, persistent, immortal like you We're a to different side And here comes this Which we heard at the beginning But now it's joyful Okay, hold on, hold on. Where are we now? We're right about 6.45 something. I want to go back and I want to compare these two renditions of that. Where he's singing up in the falsetto. So here's the first one. so much more celebratory 
joyful and confident. Notice his voice is about the same, but it's the accompaniment underneath. It's much more, it's almost dance-like. Fabulous. I don't know what's coming next, but the way he took that introductory sung melody and then placed it here again, but with a different style accompaniment to really convey that there is a sort of um, breaking of the chains that has happened. It was peaceful at first, it was not agonized. It was the peaceful voice, calm, sweet, sensitive. But now we come here and we hear the same thing. Still the same beautiful voice singing this lovely line, but underneath it, the guitar. It's no longer yum, bum, 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 nice and gentle. The guitar is saying, let's get up and dance. Let's celebrate. This is a victory and we all know it. And I think it's just fabulous. I want to listen again. <laughs> makes me happy to hear it. It's the sort of thing that makes you just want to smile. And a bit here on the end. It's like... When I was 17 years old, I shouted out into an empty room, into a blank canvas that I would defeat the forces of evil. And for the next 10 years of my life, I suffered the consequences with autoimmunity, illness, and psychosis. As I got older, I realized there were no real winners and there were no real losers in psychological warfare, but there were victims and there were students. It wasn't David Interesting. versus Goliath. Victims and students. It was a pendulum. Students. Eternally swaying that. from the dark to the light. And the more intensely that the light shone, the darker the shadow it cast. Yes. It was never really a battle for me to win. That which he just said, the more intensely the light shone, the darker the shadow it cast. That is what I so often say when people ask me, and, and wonder and bemoan a brilliant person or an incredibly sensitive artist who perhaps goes insane or gives up their entire artistic career, means of expression, because they just can't handle it or, or they just crumble and collapse and are no longer the person they used to be or even commit suicide, where, and they say, how could somebody who's created such beauty um, do such a thing? How could they give it up? Or how could they end their life? Don't they understand? Couldn't they see how incredibly beautiful? But what he says here, the brighter the light sh shines, the darker the shadow cast, is very much like the answer that I give people who ask that question, that artistic genius or genius of any kind, whether it's a brilliant mind, a scientist, um, perhaps a Nobel Prize winner or somebody who's achieved some great uh, 
thing for the world. Genius borders on insanity. And it's a very fine line, and sometimes the two are not distinguishable. It's, it's very, very difficult for people with that kind of sensitivity or that kind of intellectual brilliance to preserve a balance that lets them continue as a human being. And so what he said here, it's the same thing. The brighter the light shines, the darker the shadow that that person has to contend with. It was never really a battle for me to win. It was an eternal dance. And like a dance, the more rigid I became, the harder it got. The more I cursed my clumsy footsteps, the more I struggled. And I also love what he said about no real winners and no real losers. This idea of victims and students. I love this idea, which he says, of students. Because when you learn to understand, when you learn to, when you study and, and develop, your understanding and your way of interacting with and relating to these challenges. That is what, that is what helps you to, well, as he's saying, dance, to dance this life. And if we can dance through this life without being rigid, without being harsh and stiff and judgmental, if we can learn to bend and move, and grow with it as a student. The more I cursed my clumsy footsteps, the more I struggled. So I got older, and I learned to relax, and I learned to soften, and that dance got easier. It is this eternal dance that separates human beings from angels, from demons, from gods. And I must not forget we must not forget that we are human beings. Thank you to all of you who encouraged me and pushed me to check this out, even as I was deeply involved in my journey through the history of rock and modern non-classical music. I don't know if this song can actually be classified as rock. I guess I don't really care, because as I have said sometimes on the channel, and as I strongly believe, music, good music, is good music. And music is a gift to all of us, for all of us, by all of us. And when music speaks, and we listen, then then we are able to grow, to experience, to become more, to become more human. And so I appreciate all the encouragement to check this out. I thank you for that. And I appreciate this story, which was presented here in High Ren. As I said, it's not something that has some vast musical development. It's all about the narration, the story, and it's incredibly well set for that. Um, we have, we have enough, enough instrumental accompaniment to propel us, and his delivery of it is passionate, felt genuine. Obviously, it's his own experience, which he is portraying here. And, but he's doing it in a way that I think probably every single human being can relate to in one way or another. 
Because as he said, this is what makes us human. And if we are human, and if we are willing to accept that we are human, and willing to look at our humanness, then we find this within ourselves. Now, a couple other things that that are in my mind that I want to share before I wrap this up. Vlad told me one clue was the wall. And I guess I I can sort of see what he's saying. It's, it is like the wall in that it takes us through a dark, very dark journey. A, a psychological warfare. And it, in the end, we come out stronger, better, um, more aware. Just like in the wall, it takes us through this incredibly dark journey. Well, I guess with the wall and pink, um, it seems that it took pink a bit deeper down into this dark world before he was able to come out of it. But again, it's the human experience. It is what every one of us, each one of us, has to contend with and has to go through in one way or another as we develop in our minds, in our hearts, in our, in our relationships. And the other thing that I want to talk about a bit is what I mentioned early on in this song, that it reminds me a bit of Schumann. Robert Schumann is a classical composer and pianist from the 1800s, and he had a lot of mental struggles, mental health struggles himself. He attempted suicide three times, and um, eventually at one point he asked he requested to be admitted to an insane asylum. And the very next day, he attempted suicide again. He had a lot of, of mental turmoil. And in his music, he used his music to express and to explore the, some of these struggles that he had. Well, historians say that Schumann suffered from a disassociative identity disorder and had multiple personalities. And he explored this in his music. In fact, he even gave two different... Schumann was sort of aware of this himself. He gave himself... He gave two different names to characters which he identified as being part of himself. One was Floristan and one was Eusebius. And these characters, he would write music with the, in the character of Floristan, as if Floristan was composing, or as if it was the voice of Floristan, or the expression of Floristan. And then Eusebius was the other character. Floristan was the brash, manic, and um, heroic side of his personality. And Eusebius was the melancholy, contemplative, poetic, and sometimes depressed side of his personality. And that is why when I first started listening to this song, this piece of music, this story, um, at one point I said, I kind of think this reminds me of Schumann. Because Schumann also had very all these all these struggles and he was he was aware of it and because of his awareness he was able able to utilize it and and also in his utilization of it i think it probably helped him and he was able to recognize at one point that he had to get help when we're willing to confront these needs, these very human needs, to face the fact that I have struggles. I need help. I don't have to be perfect all the time. Then, it helps prevent a lot of pain and suffering, because not only for oneself, but for those around. Because 
if a person asks for help early enough, tragedy can be prevented. And there's no shame in it. You don't have to be embarrassed about admitting that you're human, because we're all human. And so, wrapping this up, coming to the end of this uh, experience here, I guess I want to say that I appreciate what Ren has done. I think his work, his artistic expression, is very genuine, is, is very well presented, and highly effective. It is something that every one of us can relate to. And I also want to affirm and say with him that this is humanity. And there is no shame in being human. Learn to dance with it. And if you need help learning to dance as a student, ask for help. I'll see you next time. Hi, Amy. <laughs> I see what you're doing. Okay.